Hi guys, welcome back to this week's episode of Pretty Lonesome. This week we have a debrief to do and that is a debrief of Can Lions. Okay, I was there, well I just got back last night. I got back at like 2am I think, my flight was delayed. I was meant to get back in at like 11, I ended up being at the airport for like 5 hours. Actually that's a huge exaggeration, I just can't do maths properly. But I was at the airport for ages, got home and it was going to be so late. Let me tell you one thing that I feel like I have not made clear. I am currently without a flat. I do not have a flat. I do not rent anywhere. I'm I'm without home, okay? So because I'm traveling so much, it doesn't seem worth it right now to me to rent anywhere because I would just never be there. But that does mean that when I do come back to the UK, it's very difficult. So obviously I'm in a hotel right now. Guys, I'm in a hotel in my own country living here. Like I don't know what I don't know where else to go. I don't want to rent a flat because it's so expensive. I don't know what kind of area of London I want to live in. And I don't know how long I would need a flat for if I was to rent because I think I want to do like three months in LA soon. Like I think I want to go trial, see if I like living there. Anyway, let's get to the debrief of Cam because I actually fucking have to tell you stuff. And you know what I've been considering doing? Genuinely, guys, is you know how Brooke and Tanner have the cancelled podcast and then they do their live shows where they like tell people you can't record and what stays, what's said in this room stays in this room. And basically they just like tell all their secrets and like talk a bunch of shit among other things, okay? But the point is, is like, that's it's like a safe space. Like they can kind of say what they want in there because like it's gonna stay in the room, ideally. Um, there is so many things I need to tell you guys that I can't tell you online. I think we need to genuinely, I need to host something. I need to host something and I need to be like, guys, you can't film. And we all just have mutual respect for the rule. And I see you guys down. I say, you're never going to guess the fuck what happened to me in Cannes. You know, I'm going to say, you're never going to guess what happened to me in New York and LA and actually everywhere. And guys, just sit down and fucking listen to me. Because there's so many things I have to tell you that I can't tell you and I never will tell you. But it's driving me insane. I'm not a good secret keeper, but unfortunately, these are secrets I have to keep. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to give them a debrief without being the worst person on earth? You know what I mean? Like without just like airing a bunch of shit out. But I'm like, okay. Can't air anything out. We're just gonna have to do beat around the bush. But let me actually tell you some of the stuff that happened in Cannes because I, when I heard about Cannes Lions, I was like, oh, corporate event. Like they asked me to come out and do two panels. So I did a panel for EOS. Do you guys know it's pronounced like that? I've been saying EOS for 12 years, the uh, chapstick, right? And they also do body lotion and shave stuff. Actually really good brand. I am in love with it because they gave me a bunch of stuff and I could never afford the EOS. EOS, but like body butter, shave cream before, uh, like when I was younger. And then it never occurred to me to buy it now that I can afford it. They gave it to me. I was like, oh my fucking God, this is a new thing I'm going to be buying all the time. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I love PR packages. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I didn't like, you actually just opened my eyes. Like, this is like the best thing I've ever put on my skin. This is not, I'm, they did not pay me to say this. It's sounding a lot like they did, but they didn't. Um, so I went out, I did a panel with EOS. And then I did a panel with, I believe like Can Lions. Like I think that was just like like a panel of the festival. I actually don't know what I've just done, okay? Full transparency. And um, I thought when I heard like, oh, Can Lions a corporate event, that it was gonna be like really boring. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go do this like panel, which is so fun because I'm actually really trying to do more public speaking opportunities because it's so good to get that practice in and to have that skill under your belt, but it's obviously scary. So I've been trying to like accept more of those opportunities so that I can like practice. And it's honestly, I've been enjoying it. Like I think this is the fifth panel, fourth panel I've ever done now. And so that's like good public speaking experience and I'm getting so much better at it. Like from the first time I ever did a panel and like spoke to a group of people, how much less scared I am of it now is crazy. Like it happened so fast. Like the first time I did it, I could feel my heart in my throat the whole time. I thought I was going to throw up on the stage. And then like yesterday when I was doing my panel, like I was nervous, but it, I was nowhere near as nervous. Like you just get a bit like I was jittery. You know what I mean? And then like when I was actually on the stage, whenever I speak, I do go bright red. Unfortunately, that's happened to me my entire life. Like even when I was at school, if I would answer a teacher, like answer their question, I would go bright red, like involuntary involuntarily and it happened to me it's always gonna happen to me it and if you meet me in real life and I go right right just please look past that okay it is not my choice anyway so I did those two panels I was thinking like oh corporate event boring right guys I think this is potentially the best kept secret of the industry is that this is the best party I've ever been to 
Can Lions is CEOs, CMOs, whatever the other fucking letters are, okay? Everyone that's important in a company, drunk, dancing on tables, doing some panels during the day, networking their butts off, and then partying at night. Can Lions is what I thought Fashion Week would be. Fashion Week? I love fashion, but I will say, I don't think I've ever had crazy fun at Fashion Week. Like, maybe I'm just not cool enough to get invited to the right places. God knows. Like, I have been to parties at Fashion Week, but it's just, like, not... It's, like, impressive. You know what I mean? When I'm, like, at a party at Fashion Week or I'm at any any event at Fashion Week or around anyone at Fashion Week, I'm impressed. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I'm here in this room with these people. I can't believe I'm seeing these things, these outfits, these clothes, this art. Like, I'm always just, like, mind-blown at Fashion Week. But can was how I kind of imagined people in Miami get get down. You know what I mean? Like, this is like, I've never seen anything like it. I've only seen it in, like, movies. The way the people were partying in Cannes, movies. Like, it was, last night was a, literally a movie, guys. Like, they were like, for example, we went to this one place for lunch. We took a yacht there. Yacht Girl Summit is so in the fucking works. Oh, my fucking God. I'm, it's happening so fast, I almost feel guilty, okay? We get on a yacht, we go to lunch, yeah? Sit down, the DJ is actually impressing me. I'm like, oh my fucking God, this is the first DJ I've ever heard that is actually like, not just some prick behind a computer screen. Whoa, that's gonna get me in trouble, don't care, leave it in. I talked to my editor, I talked him through it, usually I'll say something and then I'll be like, oh my God, you have to fucking cut that out because they're gonna kill me. Kill me, I don't care. Like, roast me, burn me, don't care. Um... He was the only DJ that I've ever been like, whoa. Like, he was actually, like, making me want to kind of, like, shake a leg. And so he was like, and and this is how you know I don't know shit about anything, Kay. Because all he was doing was playing TikTok noises. <laughs> he was playing, like, popular sounds. No, he wasn't. He was playing, like, really good music. Like, throwbacky music, like, 80s music. Is my nipple? Okay, it's fine. He was playing, like, throwback music, like, like old pop. Like, just good, happy, feel-good music. He'd just play like the chorus, the chorus and then a bit of a song and then he'd skip to the next one. And oh my God, like he just kept everyone so happy and everyone was drinking and we were just like on the beach and, but it was like indoors, but like on the beach. I don't know how to, it was like indoors, outdoors, you know? And like there was a breeze, everyone looked gorgeous. And we were like, everyone got up and danced on the tables and was just like, I don't know, I guess there's a thing that like where they, I, I've seen, I just, they, everyone kept doing it, like spinning their, What's it called? Napkins above their head and just like dancing. It was the most fun I've had in so long. And like, um, I ordered a margarita when I got there because everyone was being so lively and obviously I am so shy. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna need to drink as quickly as I possibly can so that I can get on everybody's vibe and not be some like party pooping bitch. Everyone was up and dancing and I had already had a margarita and I just couldn't get my butt out this fucking chair. I don't know why I was so shy. For me, if there's a bunch of like shy people around me, I'm suddenly really confident and like I can get up and do things. But when everyone is so much more confident than me, I become crippled. And that was the case at this bar club, whatever the fuck. Uh, Everyone was like so excited and so confident, so happy. I was like, I just have to go back into my shell right now. And I don't know what's worse in those situations. Girlies with like, I, I don't have social anxiety. Like I really don't when it comes to talking, being, speaking, anything. Like, I don't give a fuck. But when it comes to moving my body, oh, yes, I do. Like, when it comes to dancing or just, like, being seen (laughs) and moving in any way, like, existing, I'm like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing because I can't dance. And I can't dance to the point where I'm like, it's not even funny. It's not even cute. It's not even like, oh, that girl can't dance, but she's dancing anyway. No, it's like, oh, my God, someone fucking help her. It's like, it's like, she clearly, it's, okay. You know what's worse than not being able to dance? Standing around and being embarrassed that you can't dance. And I will die on that hill. I've seen some people throw some questionable moves, okay? And I've always just been like, it seems like you're having fun. And like, I would never judge someone for like being a crappy dancer. Cause like me too. But as long as they're doing it with a bit of confidence, I'm like, that's so funny and so sweet. And I just love to see it, right? And I feel like most people would feel that way unless you're a bitch. But when I see someone like standing with their friends who are all dancing and this person is like clearly uncomfortable and like kind of dancing, but kind of not, that's when I can't look. That's like when I cringe, I'm like, I can't watch that happen because I know how that feels. And that's how I look. 
when all my friends are dancing and I'm like, oh my God, like I can't even fake it. Like I can't even pretend to dance and be bad at it and be confident because it's just not going to fucking happen. I'm just going to stand here and want to die until you guys decide to stop torturing me. So that was what was happening at this lunch. And so I just stayed in my chair. I was like, I'm not even going to stand up and stand next to you guys awkwardly while you fucking have a great time. I'm going to stay my ass in this chair. And I'm not kidding you. I was probably the only person at this restaurant at that point in time with my butt in my seat. Don't care. I would still rather be seen like, because then you're going to look at me and think, oh, this is, she's like a fucking bitch. Like she's got an attitude problem. And I would prefer that to you looking at me and feeling sorry for me because I can't dance. Not even because I can't dance, but because I won't dance. I would rather you look at me and think I'm rude than think I'm awkward. So I just stayed in my chair and that was that. And I was honestly really annoyed because this day I had chosen not to wear any makeup. I go through phases. Don't know if you guys can relate, but when I go through a no makeup phase or a very minimal makeup phase, I feel so confident and then I feel almost weird putting makeup on. And then equally, when I go through a makeup phase, I don't feel confident enough to not wear makeup. Like I feel uncomfortable without it and naked without it. And I would always just like put it on in the morning, even if I'm running late, right? I have no say in when these phases come and go. Uh, they just they just come and I just accept it. I'm like, oh, suddenly I like don't wanna wear makeup anymore. And I like hate the way it looks on my face and I'm not gonna wear it for two months. And that's fine. And it happens like, it's just a cycle in my life, okay? And so for some reason, the day I got to Cannes, I was like, oh, I don't want to wear makeup today. I'm just suddenly in the mood. I don't even want to look at my makeup. I don't want to put it on my face. Also, the UK is having some serious issues right now eh, whereby the sun has not come out yet and it is nearly July, okay? There's been no sun to be seen in this godforsaken fucking country. So I went to Ibiza because I was like, I can't do this. Like, I've already suffered through like 10 months of winter. I cannot stay here so I went on a three-day trip with my friend to Ibiza and I basically just sunbathed and chilled out for three days and it reset my soul but it also gave me a tan okay not a crazy tan but just a bit of color back in my face and I didn't know how bad I needed that until I had it like I thought that I was fine and then I got a bit of color in my face and I was like oh my god I haven't existed I haven't been here guys I don't know who was making these fucking podcasts and I don't know who's been posting TikToks on my account it wasn't me she hasn't, I haven't been here. You understand this. I haven't been here for like 10 months. And then I sat in the sun for three days and I'm back. Don't know who was posting. Don't know who that was. I'm skilled. Skinwalker. Seriously. So anyway, I'm back now, taking over the channel again. My freckles came out and I got a slight tan and oh my God. I had like 55 epiphanies about my life. I was like, I have. I was like, I have to go. I have to, I have to not speak to any of these people ever again. This is, I've realized so much in three days. I was like, whoa, it's like my heart defrosted. And I was like, I'm in so much pain. What the fuck is happening in my life? I need to get the fuck away from these people. I need to be around these people and I need to heal. Cause all winter I've been like, I'm not healing. I don't give a fuck. I'm not even, I'm not even hurting. Actually, I'm completely fine. Then I sat in the, the sun for three days. Oh my goodness. I don't know what it is. I don't know what happened in my brain, but I was like, you know, in movies, you know, when they go, that was me in the sun. And when I realized my life is a fucking shit show, I was like, whoa, I have not let it get that bad. Oh, but I have. Oh, but she did. Yes, I did. I did do that. So we're gonna have to fix that now, but it's okay. Cause it's hot girl summer and it's fine. We'll be fine, but we will be fine. Actually can was fine. So we'll, we'll be fine. I'm trying to like, like manically convince myself of things lately by repeating them nonstop. Uh, I just like will drive my car and be like, gonna be fine, gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna, gonna be so happy. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. I, my body's not gonna shut down from a stress response. My body's not gonna shut down from a stress response. Everything's gonna be fine. Yes. So anyways, you know my friend got so stressed that half her face got paralyzed. I think it's got a name, Bell's palsy. I think that was from stress. That is horrifying. Cause you know, I always think that my stress doesn't have like physical reprimands on my body. I'm like, no, this is like in my head and I'm just being silly. Um, I forget that this shit can actually fuck me up physically. And then I realized it uh, again after my three days in the sun. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to give myself a terminal illness if I don't chill the fuck out soon. Seriously. And it's not funny. And I'm not kidding. Like I'm on, the, I'm on the way to chronic illness. You know, I already have developed an autoimmune disease from stress in the last two years. It's not fucking funny. I'm like laughing. It's not that funny. It's really not that funny. And I'm going to continue stressing myself out except I'm not because the sun is out and I've realized things. Okay, I've had epiphanies. 
So back to Cannes, right? I go to Cannes. I've had these epiphanies in Ibiza. Remember three days before I started having epiphanies? So I go to Cannes with my epiphanies in hand. And I was like, oh my God, fucking corporate event going to be so boring. No, CEOs are drunk. They're on the table. Also, I don't know if this is really bad of me to say. It probably is. But I no, it's not bad of me to say. I don't think I met more than three. Again, obviously, I didn't meet everyone at fucking Cannes. But the amount of female CEOs I met, it's bad that I felt surprised. But I feel like it's obviously it's it's like a ingrained belief almost. And it's like a sexist belief that certain job roles are for men. Like, duh, it's even in our language. Like, duh, right? I'm surely this is not a new concept. It's not. I'm just scared that people will get mad at me. But like, I kept meeting these CEOs and they were just like, women after women after women after women and I was like oh my god and I don't know why it made me really emotional like it genuinely did like I I did meet male CEOs obviously as well but the vast majority that I was meeting at these events were women and it made me genuinely want to cry and I, I don't even know why well obviously I do know why it's just touching it's just like nice to see and it's also just like I don't know but shut the fuck up we don't need to get deep today but it was just really nice to see so day one can yeah I get in. Actually, day one wasn't interesting because I just got in and I like went to my room, freshened up and then went to this like welcome drinks and welcome dinner. And then I went home and like passed the fuck out. I went to bed. Um, Because also, mind you, the day before in Ibiza, I had gone out and got violently drunk with my friend. So I was on no sleep. So I went home. I slept first day in Ibiza. Then second day, I that was when we went to this like beach club bar thing. And... After we went to that, we got back on the boat and we went to some like dinner and then we ended up at a party. The party was, let me say this. When I was at this party, I was with somebody that was on my team and I usually take someone on my team to parties because I'm fucking lame and I'm a scaredy cat, okay? So I'm with someone that's on my team, kind of just like in the corner, kind of just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then a couple of my friends walked in, but they're friends from LA. Guys, I don't know how to word this, but my life in Europe and my life in LA, in my head, there's no crossover. Like, they're not real. When I'm in LA, Europe doesn't really exist. London doesn't exist. Paris doesn't exist. When I'm in Paris and London, LA is so far away to me and the people never come here. Like, I've seen, to be fair, I have seen people at Fashion Week, of course, like from LA, but I haven't seen them in so long. And I've probably only seen them like once ever in Paris. People from LA, like my friends from LA, right? Anyway, I'm at this party. I'm really missing LA lately. Like I haven't been there since April. And I just miss feeling like I'm not rotting away in the British countryside. Like I don't want to be here. As gorgeous as it is and as genuinely in love with the British countryside as I am, like I do like it here. I do not fancy spending my fucking 20s here. Sorry. And I, I know people have things to say about LA. Like, and I so agree with you. Trust me. But I also want to have fun and be hot and sexy in 23. And I don't think that the British countryside facilitates that. I need to be in New York or LA. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Okay. Ibiza does kind of like compensate sometimes, but it's like, I know people think that it's like selling out when you go to like LA and they just, they, everyone looks down at that, especially when you're like an English person and you do it. But guys, please understand. I cannot spend my twenties in a field. It's killing me. <laughs> like it's actually so fucking boring here. And I don't love LA. I don't love the people there by any means. I don't love the interactions that I have. I don't love the energy but there are good people and there are good parties, okay? And that's all a girl cares about sometimes, okay? So let me be fucking shallow. Okay, let me be shallow. Let me wanna, I wanna go to Aloe for free, okay? And I wanna go to a party in LA and I wanna see a hot guy that I never thought that I would meet in real life, okay? And I wanna just like giggle about that with myself and like journal about the fact that I saw him, okay? Journal about the fact that he asked what my name was, okay? That's what I wanna do, okay? I wanna be like, oh my God, the guy I watched on Disney Channel when I was growing up asked me what my name was, okay? That thrills me. And I'm sorry if it's shallow and ridiculous, but it does. And it would thrill you too. It would, okay? And I know it would. And it does. It thrills you too, the idea, I know. My friends walked into the party and they're from LA and I haven't seen them in ages and I've been missing LA. And it just feels like a world away. So for them to suddenly be in my quarters, I'm like, <gasps> you guys are real. Like they don't compute as real in my head. And it's weird. I can't really explain it. But if you know the feeling, then you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, like I'm at this party and I see Jake Shane. Actually, no, I'm lying. I see Alex, Alex Al, she walks up to me, she says hi, and then <laughs> emerging from behind her, okay, is Jake Shane. And I genuinely jumped out of my skin. 
okay. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you are in front of me again. Like I've just missed their faces and like just their energy of like, you don't know about Sussex. And I like that about you. Okay, you don't know what, what shortage is. And I love that for you. And that's what I want to be around sometimes. Okay, and, and sue me. You don't know where Brighton is on a map. And that's why I want to be around you. Okay, sorry. So anyway, um, I was so like relieved to see them. And then a couple of my other friends walked in. And we all started like getting shots and drinking. I was drinking tequila as I always am. Okay, but I'd already had like two glasses of red wine. So it was, a, I was already a little bit like mixy drinky fucked up, you know? Anyway, I was talking to Jake and I don't know how I got this drunk, but he's like, do you want to go to this club? And I was like, yes. It's like 3 a.m. We've been at this Spotify party for ages. We saw Shibuzi play and we saw Tyler. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What do you even say about that? It was very good. Duh. Um, who else played? Some other guy. Can't remember his name. Shibuzi was so good. Anyway, we um, we watched them perform. Tyler came on late. So we were at this party way later than we thought we were going to be. I think we were there until like two in the morning. So then we decide that we're going to go to the club, get in a taxi. We get to this club. And they're like, we're closing. And we were like, what do you mean you're fucking closing? It's two in the morning. And I don't know what we said to them or like who said what. Next thing I know, we're inside the club, but it's like almost completely empty, okay? It's us. So it's like me and I'd say like 10 other people that we had gone clubbing with. And then like, there was like maybe 50 other people in the club altogether. And um, at this point, I'm so fucking drunk. I remember I was sat, we had like a table and I'm like sat on this like, the back of a sofa and I just went backwards. I just completely disappeared, fell. And I didn't even like notice until they were pulling me back up. And I was like, oh my God, where did I go? <laughs> where did Madeline go? I was, she was right here, don't know. We go to the bar, we get some more drinks. I'm still drinking tequila or was I drinking vodka at this point? Mind you, I don't drink vodka because it does not work for me. Like, I don't know what it is about vodka, but it just me and vodka were not friends, right? So I was drinking vodka, okay? I don't know why. And um, get a couple more drinks, we're partying, it's, you know, having fun at the club, whatever. And I don't know at what point this happened, but I just remember turning to Jake and saying, I need to leave. You have to get me the fuck out this room right this very second. Guys, this has never happened to me. In all my years of very successful drinking, that's never happened to me. I have never had to leave a place because I'm so drunk. And I don't know, I genuinely don't even remember getting that drunk. I was just suddenly that drunk. And I was like, whoa, I need to go home right now. This is the right now. So I turned to Jake, I was like, can we please go outside? He was like, yeah. And I think he could probably could like see in my face, I was gonna fucking pass out. He was like, yeah. He takes me outside and we're all sat down. And you know when, when you're in a group of drunk people and there's one person who like just puts their head down and like is or, like, so drunk and you're like scared for them? That was me. I remember we were like sat outside and I put my head down on this table and I was like, someone call an Uber, please. And like, I was so disgustingly intoxicated. I hate even thinking about this. It's like, I've never been like this in my life. Like th this was the first time I've ever been like that. I like put my head down, I was like, someone needs to fucking call a car and get me the fuck out of here right now. I can't be here another second. So they did, we get home. Don't remember getting home at all. Um, I must have zoned out in the car so that I didn't like throw up. Mind you, I'm terrified of throwing up. So like, this is terrible. This was just like a terrible experience at this point, but I'd had enough fun, so it was okay. But like, we're in the car, we're going home. We get home, I go up to my room, I don't have my key. And I live, I was staying in this like villa and um, I didn't have my key. So there's no concierge, there's no like room set. Like you can't call on anyone, like I'm in a house. So I'm like actually fucked. And it's like four in the morning, five in the morning at this point. So anyway, I had lost my key. And I went down to my friend's room. Thank God they were staying in the same villa as me. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've like lost my key. It's 5 a.m. I'm so drunk. I can barely stand. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? And they let me sleep in their bed. And it was the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Um, and I woke up and I was wearing a T-shirt that was not mine. And my T-shirt was on the floor. And I was like, did I fucking strip? Like, what the fuck happened? And I went and asked my friend. I was like, I'm so sorry. Did I take my shirt off in front of you last night? And they were like, no. Guys, I don't know what the fuck happened. I think I raided my friend's clothes, drunk. And stole a t-shirt. Because I was wearing like this really tight 
it's actually such a cute t-shirt. It's like red and it's like bedazzled and it says wanted and like rodeo. So cute. So on the on the last night, we all went out to this big dinner, right? And there was this waiter and I don't know what it was. Me and him like hit it off. I just thought he was so funny and so cute, okay? I was asking him for spicy margaritas and he kept bringing them to me and being like, is it spicy enough? Like, and it kind of just became like this little joke. And he was being so sweet and so kind and kept checking in, kept making sure everything was okay. At one point he asked me what my name was. So I said, Madeline. And then he was like, can I take a picture with you? So I was like, clearly you like don't, you weren't, you're not asking for a picture because like you watch my videos or anything because you didn't know what my name was. But what the fuck else? Like, why are you taking a picture with me? It was so random, but it was so cute. And he insisted on airdropping me the pictures so that I could remember the moment with him. I was like, are you two, did you just take a picture with me because we've become friends? I don't know what this is. It's so cute. Anyway, we took this picture. I turned to him at one point. Dinner's done. I'm like, we need more drinks. I need espresso martinis. Stat. I need margaritas. Stat. He's like, we're not allowed to serve you alcohol anymore because it's too late. And I look at him. He's like, okay, don't worry about it. He brings me four of each drink that I requested for me, my agent, Alex and Braxton, because we were all drinking espresso martinis. And then he brings me two margaritas, okay, to sustain me for a period of time. Then he comes out with a tray of tequila shots. And he does this about three times. I took the tequila shot. I don't know what he served us. He's actually, I do, it was 1942, which I am so unsophisticated, okay, because he came up to us, right? when we first ordered our drinks. And he was like, okay, what kind of tequila do you want? I looked at him like, I don't know, the one from Tesco's. Like, shut the fuck up. What do you mean? What kind of tequila do I want? The tequila kind, bitch. Give it to me. Is it not all the same? Anyway, he's like, I say to Alex, I'm like, she's gonna know. What kind of tequila do you want? 1942. Okay, perfect. 1942. This girl has taste, okay? Because I took this tequila shot and I prepared myself for war. Tell me why it was fucking delicious like smooth, it wasn't harsh, it wasn't scary. It was like the most easy shot I've ever taken. And I am used to shotting genuine, like the worst vodka you could imagine. Like Morrison's vodka, okay? That's like where we started. That's, you know, it's been a long journey for me. Um, 1942, whatever the fuck, oh my God, I get it now. And it also doesn't, like, I drank myself stupid both nights and um, I wasn't hungover once. And it's because they served me fancy people alcohol. And I was like, oh my God, I get why you guys pay so much for this now. Like, it makes sense because I always thought people pay for nice alcohol because it tastes better. Like, that's what I thought they were doing. Like, wrong. They pay that because it has good ingredients and you don't get hungover unless you drink a lot, a lot. Because it has less, like, sugar and less, like, probably sulfates and stuff you don't get hungover because you don't get dehydrated. I don't know, it's just like less poisonous for you. Delicious, highly recommend. Like that's actually the perk of, of this entire life. So we were drinking this tequila, right? So Bruno was the name of this waiter. He is just doing me a solid, right? We get up and we leave. We're standing on the, on the like sidewalk waiting for our Uber because we're gonna go to a party. When Bruno comes up to me and he's like, what club are you going to later? And I told him, I think we're going to go to the Christie. He was like, when you get there, there's a gift waiting for you under my name. What do you mean, sir? I was like, what do you mean? He was like, yeah, there's a gift for you waiting under my name. Just like ask for it when you get there. Okay, let's get married right now. That's so sweet. I, I didn't mean to flirt with him. Obviously, I probably did because he bought me a drink at a club. But I never went to the club and I never drank the drink. And I feel kind of bad. I'm like, oh my God, he wasted his money. I had to go home. I never ended up at the club that night. We went to this party and got really, you know, had a couple of drinks there. And then everyone was like, woo, we're gonna go to the club. It was like the big night out. Like everyone, like the night before had been like an accident, you know? This was like the intentional night out. Everyone was gonna go, everyone looked gorgeous. And I had a meeting at 10 a.m. and a panel at 12 and then another panel at like two. And I was just like, guys, it's already 2 a.m. I need to leave. Like, and I was also at that level of drinking where I could go home, have some water and be fine or have one more drink and my night's going that way. You know what I mean? Like I was right at that point where I was like, I'm either getting fucked up or I'm going home and going to bed. Like, and it's, the difference is one drink. 
for me because I'm a lightweight. But I was like, the difference is one drink. Am I drinking it or am I not? And everyone was trying to get me to come to the club. And I was like, guys, I'm going home. Do you know how hard it is to say no to both Jake Shane and Alex? Like, when they are both, do you know how fun they are? I think you do. I think everyone knows. Okay, do you know how fucking hard it is? Yes, it's very hard. And I said, no, nope, going to bed. And I did. And it might be the best thing I've ever done for myself. Okay. Um, I went home. I packed my bags because I had to fly the next day. And I knew I wouldn't have any time in the day to like come and pack them. So I packed them at like 3 a.m. And I got my beauty sleep, woke up and was, you know, a big, big business boy. That was me that day. Yes. My meeting went really well. I wasn't hungover. I was, you know, fresh, fresh faced fresh clothed. I didn't bring any like business attire. This is something I'm learning is how to dress properly for these events because I don't know. It's just like I never quite made it into the corporate world before this job, right? Like I was at university and I was working like crappy part-time jobs. So I was just about to tip into like corporate jobs because I was just graduating right as I started doing TikTok. But I never quite got there because by the time I had graduated, TikTok was already my full-time job, right? Like, the, it, it wasn't worth me, like, going and getting a corporate job as well. So I never quite got into that environment. And even though I did learn a lot about it at university, obviously, like, you go to events, you meet people, like, there's a lot of networking at university and you have to dress correctly for it. I still, like, I graduated uni at 21. Like, I was still kind of stupid. So I feel like I'm still learning, like, no this is how you dress, this is how you behave. Like, it's just like a learning process for me, especially as, like, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from university. And I just feel like I didn't have a lot of like experience in that area. Like I didn't witness it. So I'm like learning like, oh, this is what you have to wear. This is what you have to bring. And I'm a bad packer. So on the day of this like meeting in these panels, my my team was like, what are you gonna wear? And I was like, uh, jeans and a t-shirt. And they were like, no. So I had to run around Cannes and go to Zara and a bunch of other shops and try and find something that was appropriate to wear. And I landed on something that I think was pretty cute. I could put in a picture. I'll show you. This is what I wore, okay, to, to that day. And I bought it and then I like ran into the toilets at the Carlton, which is where my meeting was, which is like such a fancy hotel. And I ran into the toilets looking like absolute shit, got changed, fixed my face and came out looking the smartest I've looked in a while because I need to get better at, at dressing smart. One thing about me is I don't spend money. I will happily spend, I'll spend money on like H&M, like day-to-day -day clothes, but I don't like go out and buy designer clothing, bags, whatever. Like it's just not, it stresses me out. I hate spending my money um, and I just don't find it that fun. Like I just, I don't, but one time I was in Paris and it was kind of a bit of a celebration, right? We had just done a YSL show and I think it was my first YSL show and YSL was a big, like a kind of like a dream brand for me and um, it kind of all just happened. And so I was like up for spending a bit of money, like celebrate, you know, this like new relationship, this new achievement and just like life was just so exciting for me that weekend. So I was like, okay. So when one of the girls on my team, we decided we were going to go out shopping to YSL in Paris, which is just so cute, way cuter than going to YSL in London, right? So it's the morning after the show and we went to YSL and I spent the most money I've ever spent in one day and on anything ever. <laughs> and I bought a blazer and I didn't want this blazer because I was like, I don't fucking want to spend that money on a blazer. Hello. My agent was like... Actually, it was my publicist. She was like, you need this blazer. When you go to meetings, you need to be able to wear something proper. You don't own anything smart. Buy yourself this blazer. It's like a special treat. It's also like a nice material. It's not going to crease. It's gorgeous. Like you'll keep it forever. You need to own this one staple item. And I was like, fucking fine. I'll buy the fucking blazer. Okay, and a bag and a t-shirt and a coat. And some shoes. <laughs> I had a great day, guys. I spent so much money. It was so fun. I've never done it since... I should do it again, treat myself. But point being, I bought the blazer and they gave it to me in one of those like bags, you know, like the coat, like a clothing bag. It's still in there. I've, I've never worn it. Not because I don't love it, but because I don't think to bring it with me because I'm stupid. I didn't think to bring a blazer to Can Lions. 
who the fuck do I think I am? You know what I mean? Like, why did you not? Why on earth would you not bring that? I've recently hired an assistant and I genuinely think what I need to do is sit her down and tell her that I'm stupid and that she needs to talk to me like this is my first day on earth. Hey, babe, bring that blazer to your meeting. Hey, babe, don't forget to bring high heels with you to the club. Like, basic shit. Like, guys, it's stressful being me, okay? Can't remember anything. Anyway, that is my overview of Can Lions. Anyway, oh, where I am right now is a hotel room that I had to get because... I got in so late last night and I was like, I can't, I was going to go stay at my mom's and I was like, I can't pull up on her at three in the morning. So, and like upset the dog, you know? So I was like, let me get a hotel. So I'm in this hotel, um, which was near the airport. I was just like, fuck it. I don't even want to go anywhere. I was so tired. And so I just got this little hotel and I was like, also, I'm going to be a raging bitch if I see anyone right now, because I was so tired last night. And I was like, I'm going to walk in the house. I'm going to have to see my dog. And then I'm going to go see my mom and we're going to get in a conversation and I haven't done my work and I need to film a podcast and I'm fucking stressed and I'm going to stink and I need a shower and I'm going to be, gonna be a bitch and I haven't slept in like four days. And I just need to like decompress for a sec before I can see anyone and also like have a quiet space to film. So I decided I was going to get this hotel and just like come crash here for the night. And, um, and I'm really glad that I did because now I'm filming and everything is perfect. And I got a little breakfast delivery which was amazing I got avocado and poached eggs on toast which is always my go-to order everywhere ever um so I had this little hotel room this is like the nicest blanket ever too and I think I might have to steal it I actually love this hotel room um I'm glad I know that this place exists now because it's like so near Gatwick airport it's like very convenient for when you're flying anyway I'm gonna shut the fuck up I'm gonna go and one day we will all lock ourselves in a room and I will name drop and I will tell you guys the real tea and then I will make you sign NDAs and then I will wipe your phones and then I will hypnotize you so that you forget everything that I just said which is a thing that I wish I could do to everyone that was in Cannes this week actually because I need to stop getting drunk and talking to people I need to literally never speak again but anyways that's not the point I love you guys so much thank you for watching this week's episode of Pretty Lonesome I'll be back next week and I love you bye